Hi, so my name is uh, Daniel Greif, and uh, I'm going to speak to you briefly about uh, our research. So I'm uh, an assistant professor in um, the cardiovascular uh, section in the Department of Medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. And uh, the research I'm talking uh, uh, about was done um, in conjunction with a, a number of uh, other investigators. Um, and a lot of it was done in the laboratory of uh, Mark Krasnow at uh, Stanford uh, University. The uh, problems that, that we uh, focused on are related to uh, a couple diseases, and one of them is uh, atherosclerosis, also known as coronary artery disease. Uh, another uh, uh, disease which is related to what we work on is known as pulmonary hypertension, where the blood pressure in the uh, pulmonary arteries which supply uh, blood to the lung is too high, or known as hypertension. Um, so in order for me to introduce how our, our uh, research is related to those diseases, let me tell you a little bit of the structure of a blood vessel wall. And the structure of a blood vessel consists of an inner layer of endothelial cells, multiple layers of uh, smooth muscle cells, and an outer uh, adventitial uh, layer, which is a layer of connective tissue, loose uh, tissue. Um, in these diseases such as atherosclerosis, one key component of the disease is you get this, these smooth muscle cell layers that are, are found in atherosclerotic uh, plaques and are, uh, begin to um, impede on the uh, vessel lumen where the blood uh, should flow. In addition, in pulmonary uh, hypertension, uh, smooth muscle cells are also an important player in that disease. Uh, usually in the um, vessels of the lung, you have a smooth muscle cell coverage uh, to these blood vessels to a certain size. Um, or caliber of the blood vessels, but as you go further into the lung and the vessels get smaller, they should not normally have a smooth muscle cell coverage. Unfortunately, in this disease, they um, accumulate smooth muscle cells, and this uh, impacts uh, the disease and is an important component of uh, uh, the problems that people have. We uh, basically wanted to look at the process of how you build the layers of a uh, pulmonary artery. Uh, in, the, in the mouse during the developmental period. And what we found is that there was uh, a radial patterning. And what I mean by that is that the first layer of smooth muscle cells would form uh, first and it would go through some distinct um, steps. And while that process was going on in the first layer, um, the, the second layer would then begin to go through those processes. And so it's an iterative and successive process that eventually um, goes through a number of steps and then it reaches the outer layer which goes through a, some of those steps but stops before it completes all those steps. And so the inner layers that form all the step, that go through all the steps will form smooth muscle cell layers and the um, outer layer which went through some of those steps will form the adventitial layer. Um, and so through looking at, at those steps we then uh, had a, a platform where we could study some of the cellular molecular processes that are important in this. And uh, what we uh, found is that um, if you uh, can do a uh, genetic um, tool, use a genetic tool known as clonal analysis, uh, in which you can uh, mark individual cells, we could then get an idea of where do the uh, cells uh, go after, uh, during the developmental process. And so we did this uh, to mark individual cells that are in the first layer of the smooth muscle cells during this process. And we found a very interesting result. And that is that uh, during the uh, first uh, few days of building this pulmonary artery, if you mark an inner layer of muscle cell, it and its daughter cells, the cells that it gives rise to, will stay within this inner layer. So they will stay wrapping around the tube in this way and going down the tube uh, in this way longitudinally. But um, the, the daughter cells will not uh, migrate uh, radially out. And then what we found is subsequently there's a, restriction, there's a release to this restriction of radial migration and many of the cells will go uh, radially outward. Um, so the, the, uh, f the second key point that I wanted to just uh, uh, touch on is this radial process uh, was suggestive that um, there could be a signal uh, from the endothelial cell layer that was diffusing out and controlling the uh, successive and radial patterning. And what we found is that um, the um, growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor uh, B, which is uh, expressed in endothelial cells, uh, seems to play a key role in this uh, radial uh, patterning process. And in fact, we did an interesting experiment where we took uh, 
beads and, ex and um, um, coated them with uh, this PDGFB. And what we were able to do is when we put those beads into uh, the lung, we were able to um, see that the initial steps of building the blood vessel wall occurred. And this occurs then in the absence of an endothelial cell layer. So ultimately, um, this research will um, um, hopefully uh, allow us to become informed uh, about what goes wrong in uh, these diseases of atherosclerosis and pulmonary hypertension and other diseases, because we uh, speculate that uh, many of the processes that are important in building the blood vessel wall are important for these diseases and are also important um, in uh, leading to the heterogeneity of the blood vessels that we ha have in our bodies. For instance, some uh, blood vessels are um, much thicker than others and some are much thinner. And so our uh, research allows us to try to um, decipher what are the processes that control that.